Yes, all right. So the first thing that I did when I, I looked at this project was actually looked at the uh, values and see where the load was coming from. After I did that, I looked at the, saw that it was lighting from the fans, the cooling, and also the location where it was at. From that, I decided that a good uh, lighting strategy would be the first thing to go, which would be a daylighting strategy with a dimming light that actually measured the level of illuminance in the room to lower it to a 30-foot candle or more, depending on the daylighting. From that point, I, I then took a, took a look at the envelope and also reduced the load from the windows. I actually went and researched and found these wonderful uh, windows here that actually had a great uh, SHDC value and it, uh, a decent, uh, a higher U value than the other ones in that SHDC range. This was to allow for some heating to come through on the windows but to remove most of the solar load. From that point, I would also point out that, that uh, Louisiana has been hit with a couple hurricanes recently, and so the, that extra hurricane protection was pretty good too. Uh, from that, I actually did something interesting, which was to use thermal mass walls. It really just didn't deal with the insulation so much on the walls, but actually the specific heat of the walls thus allowing for a stable, more stable temperature within the building. Anyway, other than that, uh, we, I also tested out a, a double skin facade on it using macro flow and allowed for a secondary window that was a very clear 0.5 SHGC with a crack in the middle, so it allowed for the uh, convection current to go across the window to cool it. And from on top of that, I found a uh, train unit that was a scroll compressor of the XLI-20 that was a 19 sear unit to add on to that, which was then used uh, using a linear regression curve, actually found the uh, COP of that. And with that combined with the air handler that's extremely new just out with them, that actually has a five-stage 20% turndown ratio on that, so it's able to lower its CFM requirements as needed. Other than that, uh, we ran up there with a 55.71% savings, and also on the five tons of it, it, the load was actually a little over five tons. But tossing on a 30-ton unit, or uh, sorry, a 5-ton unit, not 30, ooh, ooh, man, a uh, 5-ton unit on it only added um, about 10 unmet hours, showing that, uh, that allowing for a little bit of uncomfortableness during the uh, evening hours is actually what happened when it more than likely wouldn't be occupied anyway. Yeah, hello. Uh, I had a very interesting project here. It's the Boston Red Sox training facility. It's a 109,000 square feet uh, building. Uh, it's actually a baseball stadium. Uh, I, uh, this, this was actually my, my first project to uh, do energy models. And uh, Corey has helped me a lot with the control strategies for this. Um, for this building, uh, we had 26% uh, savings with our energy model, and uh, our energy conservation strategies were the DCDs, the energy recovery, ventilators, uh, light power reduction, density reduction, and uh, a lot of occup occupancy sensor timers in the corridors. Uh, we had a lot of a uh, different areas, usage areas in this uh, sport facility, uh, run, ranging from offices, uh, locker rooms, which, you know, just exhaust air. So we have a high exhaust rate in this building. We have uh, weight rooms. Uh, we have a hydrotherapy room and also cafeteria, kitchen, restrooms, different, different uh, usage areas that we have to deal with. Uh, HVAC units, we went from DX split systems, fan call units. Uh, the building also has 100% outside units, rooftop units co with constant air volume and with energy recovery ventilation systems, VAVs, dual path systems, and well, 
in this project, I learned a lot <laughs> because, uh, you know, the control strategies for me were, um, was a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, uh, but uh, uh, we, could, we could handle it. And uh, right now, this project is uh, being reviewed by, you know, QSGBC or TBCI.